This is the message for this ending year of 2022 or 5782 and coming year 2023 and 5783 part one. Um, I wasn't planning on doing this, but I feel like it's, 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 it's okay to do this. And so, um, happy new year to all of you. So, uh, the message today is about the critical need for revelation. Uh, I was looking at, so what shall we do? What shall I say for us in the season and uh, and uh, that would be relevant to the past season and, and relevant for and will help us to go into the next season? I just felt like, uh, to me, the highlight of the year and the season coming is going to be the critical need for revelation. I know we thought on that, and I think I had uh, several series on that pertinent to you know, revelation and how are you going to be in the midst of difficult times or hard times uh, in the last days. And so there were several of that and we went into different places. But today I just want to say to us that we are, you know, we need to understand we are born into a world of war. And uh, like, like it or not, many times we don't like it, you know, like it or not, we're born in a world of war. And uh, many times we don't like it. At times it is better ignored and we many times ignore it. In most cases, a denial and at worst ignorance. And this is going to be very, very difficult because we are called to war and uh, there is no skirting that. So which one are you? Which one are you? Uh will be my, my pressing point for today. Which one will you be in this category, in these questions? Because uh, that's going to be our pressing point for the message today and this year's theme for reflection, all right? I originally just thought this is going to be just one message, but I, as I was going through it, I felt like this is going to be just part one and maybe in uh, January 8th, we will have the part two of uh, this message. So. 2022, we cried and uh, we said, I will press on, okay? And uh, going through, uh, I'll read Philippians 1, uh, Philippians 3, 13 to 14 in the BSB translation. It says, not that I have already obtained all this, because we haven't obtained, or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize of God's heavenly calling in Christ Jesus. All right. And uh, let me see. And like I said here, you know, looking at this and uh, we did uh, uh, a few messages on this, and we have rehearsed this, we have rehashed this, we have pressed this uh, this message on in different topics. But unlike Paul, the apostle, we really have not obtained. We are pressing to obtain. And with God's grace, we can obtain. Because all that we need to obtain to uh, towards that high calling is already in us through Christ Jesus. But the reality of that is really still kind of up there in the air. Uh, we have the theology of some of it, but we still don't have the reality of it enough to allow our lives to live it and have a living revelation of it. So the critical need for revelation is war. I want for us to understand that uh, we need to understand that we are born in a world of war. And what is that? I'm not going to really, you know, work on that tonight or uh, today, but I will expand that, you know, going forward in, in the next uh, Sundays. So the critical need for revelation is war. It is going to be fight. You're going to be fought. I mean, if you notice, if you see that, uh, if you continue to read Matthew 13, when when uh, Peter saw that revelation, when God opened the heavens and allowed Peter to really see that, uh, have a revelation of who Jesus is, I mean, we began to see that uh, 
you know, he he really saw it. But then a few verses away, we find him, you know, reluctant, again, blinded. Blindness uh, has gone to him. Let me just go go there. We will we will go there. Let me see if we can go there later on. If not, you know, we will pr- proceed and look at it later on. Because afterwards, you know, he said to Jesus, uh, "You're not. You're not." When Jesus started to tell them that, you know, I'm going to die. I'm going to go on the cross. I'm going to be persecuted, so on and so forth. I mean, he wouldn't receive that. He wouldn't uh, receive that. And Jesus was. Uh, Jesus saw that uh, that expression was actually influenced by another spirit, which is the evil spirit, which is the spirit that thinks like a man, that thinks from the flesh rather than from the revelation of God. And we began to see, Jesus said to him, Peter, I mean, get thee behind me, Satan. You are not thinking the things, the way God wants to think or wants you to think, but you're thinking like a man you know, a natural person in the flesh would think, all right, I I did not do that in my notes. It just came to me right now as I was talking to you. So the critical need for revelation is war, and it's easy to be blind. Therefore, we are not obligated to be responsible. It's easy to be blind. It's easy not to know it. It's easy to ignore it, yeah? Uh, because there is, uh, we don't want to be responsible, obligated to be responsible and responsive. And most would rather just be casual rather than pressing for that high call. It is war. To press on is a war. It is a fight. And 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 I know you'll say, uh, why are you emphasizing the fight? Because that's where we are. That's what we are supposed to be. And being oblivious of that is where we get into trouble. And we will proceed. All right. So what is that high call? Anyway, do I know what that high call is? To come to some, it's not clear. to And, and to others, I don't care. It's too much work. All right. <laughs> some people say, I don't know what that is. And I don't care about that anyways. It's too much work. It's too much intensity. It's too much, you know, getting there. And it's too much, you know, feeling the warfare, even if we're not, you know, acknowledging the warfare. So to to some, do I need to know that? You know, so those are some of the questions and some of the ex- uh, expressions. Uh, when Jesus asked the disciples these questions of who they say I am, who do they say I am? And you, who do you say I am? The question is really piercing. It's uh, then and even now. And yet, you know, we, we, I feel like most have not really understood the importance and the criticalness of understanding and getting a revelation of this phrase of where Jesus, you know, brought that, brought that question to them. And he brought them into the scenario and the location of Caesarea Philippi. And we will go there shortly. So I have been in Matthew 13 ever since I can remember. And I've seen things and would keep pressing to see more things. Why? Because it seemed very important and critical to understand. I felt like there is a need for me to understand uh, because that revelation of who Jesus is, uh, that he is the Christ, will build his ecclesia, will build his church, his people, really. But I don't want to use the word church because going forward in in some of the teachings we will be um uh, working on will be looking at the translation ecclesia rather than the church and we will see some of the innuendos on that and and why is that important to define it as ecclesia rather than the word church and or as we can know it mostly due to translation as church so you know we'll leave it at that for now and we will pursue that topic going forward so Jesus made a point he is building his ecclesia He's building his assembly. He's building his people, his group, his kingdom. So I know you heard me teach and use this word here and there, yet I know I have not really touched on the difference of church and ecclesia. And why? Because I guess it's not yet time. And I really believe that time is coming for us to just, just so that we can get a revelation of our rights and privileges. So instead We went to the critical need of Revelation, and we expanded on that. We looked at the power of the book of Revelation, that this book is the unveiling, disclosure, and seeing of who Jesus is in the last days. 
and the importance of that, all right? And so uh, Matthew 13 opened the heavens for revelation of who Jesus is. We saw him there in, in verse 16, I believe. From the background of Caesarea Philippi, the boldest, uh, the baddest, the darkest, the evilest part of Israel. This city was also called the gates of hell. And so when we begin to see that, you know, the gates of hell shall not prevail against this ecclesia, what Jesus is saying is, is you know, from the background of the very location where they were was the gates of hell. So Jesus said that when we see him, we will be built so strong that not even the gates of hell can prevail. Can you imagine that power? And um, I know that I, even me, myself, I have an understanding of that, but I know that there is more to see there. There's more revelation to get there. There's more of uh, an expression. What is that? How is that relevant in the last days? How is that relevant for me and for us as, as, uh, as a, an assembly, as a group of people, as a community? How is that going to be for us individually and corporately in the last days? And how is that for us as we prepare to be the bride of Jesus Christ, to be, to be ready? How is that? How is that important that we know that he is the Christ, the son of the living God? How is that important that in everything that we do, in every, in every way we read the Bible, we get a revelation, we get an understanding, a depth, and an expanded, you know, um, picture of what, what the word is saying, not just gloss over it, not just be theoretical about it, not even just be casually just going through it, just like, you know, be able to check a box, like we always say, but be able to really grasp the meaning, okay? And we will keep going. So uh, that declaration toward heaven, I really believe when, when Peter said that, uh, uh, I, well, before he even said, saw that revelation, the heavens were already, uh, there was there was a, a tearing of the heaven. And I believe that there is the releasing of this revelation from the Father uh, uh, to Peter for that season. And, and th that revelation opened the way for him to see and say, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And I really believe that if we're seeing the revelation of that in the spirit realm, not just in our peripheral understanding or in our natural um environment we begin to see that there's war happening heaven is opening and invading the earth and bringing such a revelation into uh the heart of peter which will be expounded into the disciples and which jesus will affirm and make a declaration that upon this revelation upon this you knowing that i am the christ the son of the living god i will build you I will build you in in, in such a strength and such a, a a a posture that not even the gates of hell shall prevail. And that is so powerful. And I really believe, as I was writing even these notes uh, uh, today, uh, Jesus said that when we see him, we will be built so strong that not even the gates of hell can prevail. Our fears will not prevail. Our doubts and our unbelief will not prevail. Our circumstance will not be able to distract us. Our, our difficulties will embolden us even more because we understand that we are standing upon the rock of revelation of who Jesus is. And so that declaration tore heaven to hear and shook hell trembling, seeing that this is going to be a bloody fight on which he will lose. And, and th there's so much there. There's so much power there. There's so much for us to comprehend. There's so much for us to be humbled, but at the same time to be secured, at the same time to allow ourselves to be confident that I need and, and, and be searching and be pressing to see Jesus because that's the cry of the heart of Paul. I want to see Jesus. I want to see you more. I want to see you in your resurrection power. I want to see you for you who you really are, apart from just the teachings, apart from just, you know, uh, what is being uh, taught to us by the church, by other people. But what do I see? How do I see you? I want to see you for myself so that I can contribute that revelation into the bigger purpose of God on this earth for his church and for his people or for really his ecclesia. 
So what Jesus said was prophetic. He prophesied it. And for sure uh, will be the statement and vision to which his ecclesia will posture herself as the bride standing ready to rule, take note of that, to rule and reign with Christ. When we get a revelation of our rights and privileges, which we really need to, I know here, up here, and even over here in our uh, knowledge, we know that we are to reign and rule, but really we don't. Because we don't see ourselves ruling and reigning. Amen. And uh, we're not seeing this. We're not understanding the power of the Christ, the son of the living God. So when we get a revelation of our rights and privileges as his bride, we'll, we, will be, we will be formidable and a force to reckon with. I, in some of my notes, we will be. We. All right, hang on. Okay, so we saw and heard Jesus speak of the end times in Matthew 24 to 25. And uh, we saw it, he talk, talked to us about the signs of the times, its characteristics. He wanted, he warned us, he cautioned us, and he prescribed what we are to do when that time comes. But you will notice that up to now, these verses has been Fought to be taught, never mind to seriously comprehend and take to heart what it means, what it means, as well as the consequence of the warnings, if not heeded. It's, it's so powerful. Why do I say that? Because if we really have a living revelation of Matthew 20, 25, we will focus on things that will make us ready so that we will not be drawn to things that don't matter. Because right now we're still drawn to things, consequence really, in relationship to eternity, in relationship to where we're investing our lives into. So, uh, like I said, our choices will be different. Where we spend our time and money will not conflict with that attitude to be ready. Right now, many of our choices are still distracting us. Many of our aspirations are contradicting, is, is robbing us of time, is robbing us of that uh, confidence to just be satisfied with simple, be satisfied with just focus and choice, all right? So our tendencies will be to that which will build us to be ready. And uh, this is war. You notice it's a fight. Some of you, you get, you know, in this season, you get so busy. We get so busy with uh, our parties. We get so busy with our food, with our preparation. And, and, you know, I'm not necessarily saying that's bad necessarily, but don't you feel like, I feel like it gets in the way. I was, I was happy with it, with my whole family here for Christmas and so on and so forth. And we had fun and I was, you know, thrilled and I was so happy. And yet it becomes distracting. All right. Yeah, I'll probably, you know, do that in more depth some other time. But sufficient for us to just, you know, hear that. Listen to that question. Listen to that statement. Because it's critical to have revelation in the end times, especially we saw from a new and deeper perspective what Jesus said in John 15, 12 to 17. I mean, we went in many places uh, talking about revelation, and I'm pressing on to really bring us into that place of uh, desiring revelation, especially the revelation of who Jesus is, because it is going to be very important. So, so you know, in in because of because we're in that topic of revelation we looked at john 15 12 to 17 and there the key there would be you know he was telling us you're my friend and i consider you my friend i'm far praising mm -hmm. i'm considering you my friend because uh as I, I no longer call you slave because a slave doesn't know what the master is doing but i call you friend because i tell you the things that my father tells me and i tell to you I reveal to you, see, that's revelation. He wants us to get the revelation. He wants us to get an understanding. Maybe not so deep in the first go around, but getting deeper as you desire it. 
giving d- deeper as you press on, giving you an expanded idea and and thought and and vision and 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 heartfelt understanding of what uh, he's showing you. He's showing us, and this is even this. Just if we just park here in John 15, 12 to seventeen, it's so powerful. Here he says in the BSB translation, "This is my commandment." that you love one another as I have loved you. That's a command. It is not when it's convenient. It is not when when everything is okay with the other person. No, regardless of the person's likability or non-likability, his command is you love one another in the same way that I have loved you. I mean, reflecting back, go back to John 13, 34, 35, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another even as I have loved you. I don't know if you notice that I continue to press on to that scripture because it is so important. He called it new commandment because it emphasizes one thing and the most important thing, which is your love for one another, your love for other people will be premised from how you have experienced my love for you. How have you experienced the love of God for you? How have you experienced the love of Jesus for you is going to be the measure is going to be, you know, the, uh, the the parameter to which we are required and commanded to love somebody else. It's not according to our convenience, not according to whether they're likable or not likable, like I said earlier, but according to I have experienced the love. Jesus loved me in spite of me, and therefore I can do that to others. I can love them in the same way that I have been loved. Amen. And so he said here, so greater love has no, no one than this. This love is, is, has the ability and the power to lay down his life for his friends. Do you guys see that? So you are my friend. Now he brings it back to you. You are my friend if you do what I command you. If, does this, if that's the definition of friend, then what is the definition of an enemy? You are my enemy if you do not do what I command you to do. Wow. Think about that. I'm not going to expand that right now, but we will do that another time. So no longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not understand. See that? Understanding is part of revelation. Understanding is part of heaven opening something, opening the heavens and bringing to us understanding from above the waters of the world and from above the confines of of the natural uh, condition of of this world, but beyond, from heaven, heaven opens and brings us that understanding. So you are a friend, for a servant does not understand. So many amongst us, if you look back, still in the servant category. Why? Why? Because many do not understand the things of God, the ways of God, the purposes of God, the choices that we are supposed to make. There's no understanding there. And so, because you're still a servant, and as a servant, you're still in a different category, all right? But he's saying, for a servant does not understand what his master is doing. Understanding takes us into a place where we understand what the master is doing. And as we understand what the master is doing, we're able to partner with him. We're able to walk with him. We're able to have conversation with him. We're able to live our lives in the same way that we are given that understanding because our master wants to elevate us and to raise us up into his, the level where he, we, can, we can continue to communicate with him. But I have called you friends. See that? I have called you friends because everything I have learned from my father, I have made known to you. Do you see the gravity of that? The power of that? You did not choose me, then comes here. And the premise of that, and you know, I'm back and forth in this scripture. I'm not done with this scripture. I, I keep, I, I know I still have a lot of, to understand there. And so do you. And so all of us, you know. And so because everything I have learned from my father, I tell you. Um, and, and he said, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit. Fruit that will remain. 
so that who, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. This is my command to you, love one another. Again, see, it's like a sandwich. The beginning is love one another. And the ending of that phrase is, of those uh, scriptures is, again, uh, loving one another. And, and we got to have a revelation of that. Why is that important? Why are you repeating yourself, Jesus? Why are you pressing this? Why are you allowing this to penetrate our hearts and our soul and our mind and our attitude? What is this supposed to do to us? This, this is a big deal. He wants us to know that you, you did not choose me. You're not responsible for being chosen. I am responsible for being for you being chosen. Therefore, I am responsible to see you through, to see it, you know? And uh, because you are my friend, I'm going to do that for you. I mean, he already premised, you know, he's talking about, again, already he's talking about him going to the cross. He will die for you, my friend. I'm dying for you, Linda. You're my friend. but and I'm going to die for you because I'm your friend. Because I chose you. I'm going to die for you so that you may see uh, the power and, and the, the consequence of being chosen. And, uh, and again, you know, uh, being chosen allows us to, being a friend and being chosen allows us to bear fruit, fruit that remained, that will remain. And in, in the upper upper verses, you will see that the, your joy may be, may be full, may remain. And in other translation says that my joy will become your joy because you're attached to me. You're bearing fruit according to my life, according to what I'm saying, to how, who I am. And, uh, and here, let me read it to you in the Amplified. This is my commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. No one has greater love. No one has shown stronger affection than to lay down, give up his own life for the friends, for his friends. You are my friends if you keep that's another word, keep, meaning you guard this friendship. You, 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 you watch over this friendship. Uh, uh, you're my friends. If you keep on doing, keep on doing consistency, the things which I command you to do, I do not call your servants slaves any longer, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. There you go. What is he working out? What is he planning? What is he up to? But I have called you my friends because I have made known. I have revealed to you. I have opened up the heavens for you. I have given you understanding, as in the BSB translation, to, to you everything, uh, have known to you everything uh, that I have heard from my father. I have revealed to you everything that I have learned from him. That's so powerful. Uh, you have not chosen me but I've chosen you and I have appointed you. I have planted you that you might go and bear fruit and keep on bearing and that your fruit may be lasting that I am. He may give it to you uh, that may be lasting, that it may remain and abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name as presenting all that I am, he may give it to you this is what I command you, that you love one another once again, he says there. I mean, you know, I, I'm not going to elaborate a lot of it. I just want you to savor. I want you to be provoked by it. I want those uh, questions, the, the, the statements, and the scripture come to you. I have here another one. In the message translation, it's even beautiful, but I will start with verse 11. He says, I've told you these things for a purpose. What is that purpose? That you, my joy might be your joy and your joy holy, mature. So there is a maturing of joy. Amen. We'll go there another time. So this is my command. This is the message translation. That love one another the way I loved you. This is the very best way to love. Wow. Put your life on the line for your friends. Are we ready to do that? Put your life on the line for your friends? And who do you consider friends? You are my friends when you do the things I command you. I'm no longer calling you servants because servants don't understand what their master is thinking and planning. Take a look at that. 
the elevation of us being friends, the elevation of us, uh, God, Jesus, just elevating us into that position. And we are elevated to that position because we abide in him. And the, the, look at the message and say, it has consistency, fervency, faithfulness. All right. Uh, no, I've named you friends because I've let you in on everything. I've heard from my father. You don't choose me. Remember, I chose you and put you in the world to bear fruit, fruit that won't spoil. Wow, that is so powerful. As fruit bearers, whatever you ask the father in rela relation to me, he gives you. But remember, the root command, love one another. I mean, this is so powerful. And to me, this coming year, 2022 is full of that teaching. And 2023 is going to be filled with much more of that. And I really believe what happened is revelation, because we have a revelation and a growing revelation and a, a growing understanding and a growing wisdom to live what we believe, then I really believe 2023 is going to be action, action time, putting, you know, uh, uh, boots on the ground where the rubber meets the road. All right. So it's no longer going to be hoo, 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 over there, just a lesson, just a teaching. That's, that's another preaching, but it's going to be, it needs to come alive. It needs to be, uh, that's why it has to be revelation. That's why uh, revelation is not just for anybody. It's for a friend. Revelation is for a friend of God. Revelation is for a friend who stands as a friend of God. Being chosen is a position and a calling and a powerful endowment of God to any one of us and, and be, to be raised in a position of responsibility and chosen. He will, he will build you. This is the revelation of that. He will build you. He will protect you. He will take care of you. He will nourish you. See, that, that's how I see that. Revelation of the power of that declaration. I mean, he said it. He prophesied it. You did not choose me, but I chose you. That is so powerful. You know, I could feel that even, you know, uh, crashing into wrong mindsets, into uh, religious mindsets, into just mindsets that, you know, have not comprehended. That's why I, I premised the topic as, you know, there's, there's a war. We got to understand it's a war. Every revelation is a war. And you keep fighting to see more of that revelation, understanding of that revelation, living that revelation, and growing in that revelation and for that revelation, because that is going to be our key and our cue to be built to be able to withstand the fight in the gates of hell. Amen? Because we will. We will be fighting the gates of hell. So a revelation of the power of that declaration to us, to our strength at the gate when enemies come to invade. Revelation of who Jesus is will help us be strong at the gate when our enemies come to attack attacked our power, attacked our church, attacked our congregation, attacked our children, attacked, attacked our community, so on and so forth. And, you know, I get all of this. I keep thinking of this because I, I really believe that 2023, we will see a lot more of Daniel. We will see a lot more of uh, Matthew 24, 25. We will see a lot more of uh, uh, Revelation um, 19, 7, the, the bride is ready. Um, Revelation 22, 6 to going down there when the bride, uh, the spirit and the bride would cry, come, come, Lord Jesus, come. All right. And so we see revelation in war. The revelation is war. And, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'll read. Yeah, I'll read Daniel 10 because we, we will see, we will surmise from this why revelation is so important in the last day, in his days and in our days today. So in the third year of the reign of King Cyrus of Persia, a message was made plain to Daniel, whose Babylonian name was Belshazzar. The message was true. This is the message translation, okay? Uh, the message was true. It dealt with a big war. 
uh, he understood the message, the understanding coming by revelation. During those days, I, Daniel, went into mourning over Jerusalem for three weeks. I ate only plain and simple food, no seasoning or meat or wine. I neither bathed nor shaved until the three weeks were up. Oh, on the 24th day of the first month, I was standing on the bank of a great river, the Tigris, and I looked up and to my surprise, I saw a man dressed in the linen with a belt of pure gold around his waist. His body was hard and glistening as if sculpted from a precious stone, his face radiant, his eyes bright and penetrating like torches, his arms and feet glistening like polished bronze and his voice deep and resonant sounded like a huge choir of voices. So I, Daniel, was only one, the only one to see this. The men who were with me, although they didn't see it, were overcome with fear they sensed it, they sensed the present, the powerful presence, and ran off and hid, fearing the worst. Left alone after the appearance, abandoned by my friends, I went weak in the knees, in the, uh, the blood drained from my face, meaning he got pale. I heard his voice at the sound of it. I fainted. It must be so powerful that he fainted. Fell flat on the ground, face in the dirt, A hand, and then a hand touched me and pulled me to my, uh, to um, pull me to my hands and knees. Daniel, he said, man of quality. In another translation, man beloved of God, man of quality. Listen carefully to my message and get up on your feet. Stand at attention. I've been sent to bring you news. When he had said this, I stood up, but I was still shaking. Relax, Daniel. He continued, don't be afraid for the moment you decided to humble yourself. Here's another revelation, humility for us. In this last season, we talked about humility, how that power that is so powerful. Um, humble yourself to receive understanding. See, to receive understanding, you got to humble yourself. That's revelation. Um, your prayer was heard and I set out to come to you, but I was waylaid by the angel prince of the kingdom of Persia and was delayed for a good three weeks. But then Michael, one of the chief angel princes, intervened to help me. I left him there with the prince of the kingdom of Persia. And now I'm here to help you understand what will eventually happen to your people. See, this is then for Daniel. He was entrusted with last day's events and last day's revelation. But this is for us today. God wants us to understand today so that we may posture ourselves properly, purposefully, and strongly. So, and now I'm here to help you understand what will eventually happen to your people. This is also what we need to understand, what will happen to us in the last days. The vision has to do with what's ahead. In, in his time, was so far away, but in our time today, is so near. While he was saying all this, I looked at the ground and said nothing. Then I was surprised by something like a human hand that touched my lips. Remember when Isaiah in Isaiah 6 also was touched. Uh, his mouth was touched with a fiery a coal from the altar of God, hot coal, coal to cleanse his mouth. And in these last days, we're going to have cleansed mouth. And I'm going to talk about that another time. So I opened my mouth and started talking to the messenger. When I saw you, master, I was terror stricken. My knees turned to water. I couldn't move. How can I, a lowly servant, speak to you, my master? I'm paralyzed. I can hardly breathe. Then this human-like figure touched me again and gave me strength. He said, don't be afraid, friend. Peace. Shalom. Everything is going to be all right. Take courage, be strong. Even as he spoke, courage surged up within me. I said, go ahead, let my master speak. I've given, you've given me courage, he said. Do you know why I'm, I'm come? I'm come here to you. I now have to go back to fight against the angel prince of Persia. And when I get him out of the way, the angel prince of Greece will arrive. But first, let me tell you, what's written in the true book, in the book of life. 
No one helps me in my fight against these beings except Michael, your angel prince. This is this is a lot, and I'm not going to elaborate it. Uh, elaborate it at this point in time, but we will in another time, in a more more in depth. So we had and continually having a revelation of the power of um, power of the revelation is coming in this season. 2023 is going to be full of that. And we have to post ourselves, have to make ourselves available. Uh, let's get an understanding of where we are right now mm. uh, so that we may be ready for 2023. I really believe 2023 is no longer a game. It will no longer be easy. It will be requiring. It will be compelling because it will need contending. All right, so that's it for revelation. And one of the other things, of course, I talked about humility. We had a revelation of that, that for us to overcome pride in a nation or in a city or in our environment, our community, we have to really walk in humility. And humility is not a, a posture of your face, a condition of your face. Humility is a condition of the heart. It's a yieldedness and a willingness to really submit to God in all things and in everything. It's really, you know, denying yourself, taking up your cross and follow me, that kind. And I know we can quote that, but uh, time has come and it will begin even more intensely in 2023 where we can no longer just be be strong, be courageous. We cannot just take courage by what we have memorized, by but what has lived inside of us and is able to be alive to come out of us. All right. So the other thing that I highlighted, I would like to highlight for us in this season is uh, the power communion. For the past, I guess, two years now going, or many, even more, I think we started this in 2020, and 2021 and then 2022 and going forward 2023 i really believe that as we begin to have revelation of the power of communion in our lives individually and corporately and globally we will begin to see depth we will begin to see massive uh, massive understanding of where we are and what we are uh, supposed to do in this next next season so we had a continually uh, having revelation on the power of communion. So we we had a continually having revelation of the power of communion. You got that. I mean, we even online, uh, we've been doing that. And we've been, you know, really um, getting a revelation of, of communion and its power, the healing, the restoration. The deliverance is coming, yeah. So for us individually uh, and corporately and even nationally, for example, for San Francisco, we had a revelation. God gave us a revelation of the power of giving communion to the land strategically and wherever we would be, we would be strategically sent. Uh, the Lord, you know, gave us this revelation, do communion, give communion to the land, feed the land with my bread and my, my, my wine. And we continue to sing that cry to be one with you, to be one with you. This is communion. And we still do not understand the depth of that and the power of that. But I really believe soon in this 2023 coming forward, we will understand the power of that and why that and how is that cleansing and how is that warring against the, the, the territory that we are sent to, to pray for. So the year 2023 will be very revelatory. But it's it's war. It is war. Okay. And I, you know, I, we would teach on this on war. And it's not about just warfare. It's not just about you, about me, about us. But this is, the war is about bringing the kingdom of God into an expanded and expounded, you know, uh, presence, manifestation in the midst of us. Uh, it, it's bringing us into a place and a position of understanding who we are, what we are, what we are supposed to do, that we're not just a cute person here that's born again, saved by the grace of God, but there is so much more. The salvation is just the beginning. And it is just an entry point to where we need to be. 
in a place where we are to reign, to rule and reign with Christ Jesus. So here it is. So the year 2023 will be very revelatory, but it's war. It's equipping. It's training. It's giving up of things we thought, okay, but is now getting in the way. Think about that. What do you see? Not theoretically, but truthfully, honestly, and really. What is truth? Uh, what is truth is what will set you free. What is truth is what sets me free. And corporately, what sets us free. So 2023 will be an ushering of the bridal cry for her bridal identity to take her place. What is that place is where we will pray for revelation. And uh, we will pursue all of this. I mean, just giving you a little bit. I didn't plan to do this. I didn't even plan to have a message. But I just felt like, yes, we can start part one of this series that we will be teaching on and uh, we'll get prophetic revelation from from all of this in the 2023. Uh, in the get-go January, we will see that. I will just be with you, um, I think, the 8th and um, the 8th and the 15th. And then I will be gone on the 17th and won't be back until the 29th. So there will be at least... Uh, two Sundays that I can expound this message and bring us into a platform where we will be standing and we will be uh, getting prophetic revelation from the Lord. And so I will end here. Merry Christmas and a great new year. I am uh, so glad that we have, we're still alive at this time and will continue hopefully to be alive in 2023 and so on and so forth. And, uh, you know, I keep saying every time I have a physical attack that I am, I am going to live and not die because I'm going to proclaim. Uh, let me read that to you in my notes. Um, because it is a good declaration for all of us who's been probably, I don't know about you, but I have been facing this warfare. I will not die, but live and declare the works of God because I have still have that assignment. I really believe Um it's just a fight. <laughs> it's just a fight. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You see this? That's war. But mighty to the pulling down, mighty in God to the pulling down stronghold. And I thank you. Let me pray for us tonight, today. Uh, Father, I thank you for revelation. I thank you for, we because we are your friends, you show yourself to us. Because you've chosen us, you reveal yourself to us. And we pray that your revelation of who you are will continue to strengthen us and we continue to desire it. We continue to want you to show yourself to us. It may be terrifying. It may be mind-boggling. It may be... Uh, it may be so powerful and so... We can't comprehend, but Lord God, we want you. We want to see you. We want to see you face to face. We want you to breathe on us once again. We want the Holy Spirit to flood us with his presence, with your presence, with his glory, with understanding, with counsel, with might, and the spirit of the Lord upon us. We pray that we will be faithful, fruitful, humble, and Lord God, always desiring to walk in the truth, not distracted, but always comprehending and discerning what the Spirit of God is saying to his ecclesia in these last days. In Jesus' name I pray. I love you all. God bless you.